remember my mum as a energetic person, an outgoing person, and yeah, just miss her a lot. Because at the time I was pretty young and she passed away. It was a lot to take on, especially my dad too, and myself. I used to come home from school, you know, not knowing where my mum was. And I would just go in the room and cry, calling out for her. It was hard growing up without a mother, very hard. County's Manukau has 27,000 people diagnosed with diabetes. Most specific people are at risk of getting type 2 diabetes, a condition that worsens over time and has no cure. Diabetes is nothing new to us. We all know someone who's been diagnosed or someone whose family has been affected. I talked to a specialist today to shed some light on why Pacific Islanders are affected the most. Tragically, Pacific people have one of the highest rates of diabetes in the world. Um, there have been some very good surveys done in Auckland in fairly recent time published which show that in Pacific people over the age of 35, that's a young age, um, the rates of diabetes is one in four people. So that is incredibly high. Um, most of those people now know they've got diabetes, so it is less a problem that they don't know. The problem comes to obesity uh, as, as the driving factor, a, as it does for all people, so irrespective of ethnicity. Why obesity is more common in Pacific people is a, is a more complex uh, thing to address. The, there may be genetic susceptibility. Um, but that is not something that we can alter, and I suspect it's not something that someone wants to alter. But there are a number of, if you like, social, cultural, probably economic factors which drive that. Um, a, a, a society or a community that have a strong respect for food, and food has an important part in their daily and, and communal living, is more prone to diabetes. And it's just an, it's a unintended consequence of what is otherwise, of course, a very good and social um, gathering, if you like, or practice. And what effects does diabetes have on the human body? Well, worst case scenario is, is a person that doesn't even make it to hospital with, with heart disease or a heart attack or a cardiac arrest early in life. Um, but in, but, but um, many people actually stumble along with a number of complications over time and, and unfortunately that affects their quality of life, not just their duration of life. So, so a picture of a worst case scenario often looks like a person who's lost their sight, who may have lost one or other limb, and who's reliant on being plugged into a dialysis machine of one sort or another, maybe three or four times a week for many hours. And that person can't work, their quality of life is really destroyed by all of those complications and of course it has huge effects on their ability to interact with their family uh, and their family's independence. Um, so that's a, you know, it's a tragic sight to see. Diabetes is often preventable by healthy eating and regular exercise. I talked to a dietitian today to get some more advice. Among Pacific people, uh, the way we eat is uh, really not to prevent getting diabetes. We eat food as what's available at home what we want to eat because it tastes nice and what we can afford to buy. And when you look at that for a point of view of what this research has done, it's like we probably come out that we eat a lot of high fat, high sugar, high salt food. Uh, food is high in salt, a lot of processed food. And when you bring that to look at it as a, the solution for having diabetes, it's like we are specific, we need to really think again. Why do we choose to eat what we eat? We have to look at the way, how many meals we have in a day, the time we eat, and the type of food that we buy, and how we prepare them, 
is like what we eat when we go to a, to a function, to a birthday or wedding or the funeral. It's like um, it's all those factors that we have to consider in, in a way to really make a Pacific person think twice of what they eat. It's not really that we tell people eat more fruit and vegetable. You ask them, what do you eat? What did you eat for breakfast this morning? It's made them realize it's like, um, what did I eat? How much did I eat? People need to know, how can you motivate me? And the tool is really is like to show them the basic ways of eating better. With all this information about healthy eating and exercise, we now take a look at how our community is putting this into action. As a church leader, I feel we need to, to refocus and not just concentrate on the spiritual life of people and, and, and look after what it is to nurture their spirit, because that's very important. But just as important as Dawn says, I know your, your spiritual life is, is, is well and, and that you are continuing to grow, but my prayer is that your physical health too is well and grows. And as a church, we preach that. We make sure that the programs we run make people active, not just spiritually, but physically and mentally also. So throughout the week, we try and, and ensure that people have enough time to spend with their families also because that's making their families active and healthy. But we incorporate into our church life and program um, activities that encourages people, that encourage people rather, to be active spiritually, physically and mentally. So if we preach and live a lifestyle that says what is sinful is overeating, what is wrong is being lazy and not being active, what's right and empowering and gives life is being active and it does not matter how you do it, if that's what will make you active, you know, if it's aerobics, if it's jumping up and down, if it's brisk walking on the road, in, 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 in public, if that's what will make you healthy, that's what's not sinful. Pacific Media has the ability to reach through cultural barriers and bring awareness about health issues into Pacific homes. Yeah, I think um, Pacific Media uh, has a responsibility um, at first to uh, inform our communities um, and the health, uh, the topic of health for our communities is, is a major one. There's a lot of issues that um, our Pacific men won't talk about um, in the home or, or um, you know, privately. It's very difficult, but when you put it on air and you talk around the issue and you bring other people to talk about it, it gets them thinking. You, know, you get some callers ringing through. You know, it's the anonymity of radio too. You know, you don't have to say who you are. And uh, I think for us, the the information and, and how it is out there and getting people to actually want to make. Um, to get interested in it, to, to, to show some interest. If they hear the message so often that they should know that um, yeah, um, walking is, is a, an easy exercise to do. Um, and the more you talk about it, the more we um, promote the positive aspects of um, the benefit of walking, you know, then hopefully that will encourage people to do something. We all know diabetes is a problem for Pacific people. The knowledge and support is out there. Let's share it, take up the challenge, and let's beat diabetes.